In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast, even now, to those things that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord said this to me, Go and buy a linen loincloth and put it round your waist, but do not dip it in water. And so, as the Lord has ordered, I bought a loincloth and put it round my waist. A second time the word of the Lord was spoken to me. Take the loincloth that you have bought and are wearing round your waist. Up! Go to the Euphrates and hide it in a hole in the rock. So I went and hid it near the Euphrates, as the Lord had ordered me. Many days afterwards, the Lord said to me, Get up and go to the Euphrates and fetch the loincloth I ordered you to hide there. So I went to the Euphrates and I searched and I took the loincloth from the place where I had hidden it. The loincloth was spoilt, good for nothing. Then the word of the Lord was addressed to me. Thus says the Lord, In the same way I will spoil the arrogance of Judah and Jerusalem. This evil people who refuse to listen to my words, who follow the dictates of their own hard hearts, who have followed alien gods and served them and worshipped them, let them become like this loincloth, good for nothing. For just as a loincloth clings to a man's waist, so I had intended the whole house of Judah to cling to me. It is the Lord who speaks to be my people, my glory, my honor, and my boast. But they have not listened. The Word of the Lord You forget the God who fathered you. You forget the rock who begot you, unmindful now of the God who fathered you. The Lord had seen this, and in his anger cast off his sons and his daughters. You forget the God who fathered you. I shall hide my face from them, he says, and see what becomes of them. For they are a deceitful brood, children with no loyalty in them. You forget the God who fathered you. They have roused me to jealousy with what is no God. They have angered me with their beings of nothing. I then will rouse them to jealousy with what is no people. I will anger them with an empty-headed nation. You forget the God who fathered you. Alleluia, Alleluia! Through the good news, God called us to share the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put a parable before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in the field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the biggest shrub 
of all and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and shelter in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour till it was leavened all true. In all this, Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he would never speak to them except in parables. This was to fulfill the prophecy. I will speak to you in parables and expound things hidden since the foundation of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, in today's Gospel, Jesus continues on in his series of parables about the Kingdom of Heaven. But what's so important about this Kingdom of Heaven that Jesus keeps going on and on about, especially when it's in Heaven? Or at least we may think that it is in Heaven or about Heaven. But in fact, this Kingdom is not just in Heaven, but it's the reign of God about God being the Lord of our lives here and now, while each of us are still living and breathing on this earth and not just in heaven. That is why Jesus keeps going on and on about this kingdom, because we are all invited to be part of this kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven, and to bear witness to this kingdom, especially by our baptism. How are we to bear witness to this kingdom? by being disciples of Christ. And the reality is as such that even though we may be baptised, that doesn't automatically mean that we are living as disciples of Christ. That is why the Gospel starts off by saying, Jesus put a parable before the crowds. Not everyone in the crowds were disciples of Jesus. Of course, some of them were, but not everyone was a disciple of Jesus. The entire crowd was made up of all sorts of people with different sorts of intentions and motivations for listening to Jesus, together with their own unique level of their relationship with God. You and I, we, we are that crowd, each with our own reason why we would even be engaged in this liturgy of the word in the first place. And each one of us is at our own different stage of our journey and relationship with God. And that's okay. Jesus precisely recognised that in the crowd and in each one of us. And because of that, he invites each one of us to grow in our faith as disciples. That no matter how great or how little, or even how perhaps insignificant we think our faith may be. But like a mustard seed, or with that little bit of yeast, our response to God's grace, it can and has that potential to grow, to become, as the Gospel tells us, a tree, so that the birds of the air come and shelter in its branches that we become supports to others and that we might become bread broken for others, even with the little yeast that we think we might only have. God can knead and mould mold us so that through us, God can feed and give life to others as we grow each day to become better disciples and witnesses of God's love. That is why, in our first reading today from the prophet Jeremiah, God is using Jeremiah's prophetic and symbolic actions to show how precious we are to God. How that, if we do not recognise and respond to God's love for us, it will be to our own ruin, just like that precious cloth that was spoilt. And unfortunately, the fact is, many a times, we can end up like that, even unknowingly. And that is why 
our responsorial psalm today starkly reminds us in the refrain, you forget the God who fathered you. How true it is, dear friends, that very often we really do, we really do tend to forget about God. I tend to forget about God. Let us then ask for His grace to always be mindful of His presence, His love and His working in our lives. And whatever level of faith we think we might have, dear friends, we may best respond and open our hearts to God's grace to enter, to work in and through our lives. Let us then, with the faith that God has given to each of us, together as disciples of Christ, pray in the words He has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us, with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.